All right, so this is a good example how what I call the beast, what people refer to as the Illuminati or what I also call the controllers, use certain archetypes, use certain personality types to create an illusion and to move people in a direction away from the truth. So I've covered this before. They've taken John Oliver, who used to be a comedian associated with The Daily Show, where a lot of people trusted Jon Stewart more than they trusted the average news media people. There is a certain artificiality with the, the major news networks and their anchor people. They just, you know, they're just sort of like models that read news. They don't have much of a personality. They don't have much of a, of a rapport with people. And since the media has been caught lying, they're just, just, there's a disingenuous nature to them. And you have a lot of people who are a little bit smarter than the average people. Maybe they're a little bit irreverent. And so they don't trust the news. So then they have this secondary system where they have comedians who are people who speak truth to power. So you have a lot of young people, a lot of people who are a little bit more intelligent, especially if they're on the left, who like these irreverent, type of comedians who seem more real and genuine to them. And they seem like they wouldn't sell out because they have bad attitudes and, you know, they seem like they have some integrity or whatever. And when these comedians get outraged, that means that there's something really wrong. So, and they will be more trustworthy. People think, consider them more trustworthy than these news anchors that just sort of read the news with no personality. And John Oliver has built up an audience in his new HBO show by doing very thorough research, covering a topic for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and doing really thorough research. He obviously has a research team, and they cover some obscure news items with more depth than you would get on CNN or Fox or MSNBC or any of these networks. And he represents the liberal community that loves science and he talks about things in a way that these are factual events. And then he goes into more thorough analysis and he's built up a level of trust and people look to him as a reliable news source. And in that, he has done a number of hit pieces on the truth community. And this is a new one he's just done, linking Alex Jones and um, Donald Trump to for truth community narratives that are almost completely proven 100% right, but he uses these two proven liars as a way to mock these truthful narratives. Now, this is a segment about Donald Trump being a liar, and he documents a lot of the lies that Donald Trump has told. And he does it in such a way like Donald Trump is so much worse of a liar than all these other politicians. Now, Hillary Clinton, everything about her was a lie. Everything about her was a brand to be a political. Everything she did was political for the last 40 years. And so there was nothing about her was genuine. And so to make Donald Trump to be somehow worse than Hillary Clinton and the, the rest of these liars is a complete psychological operation. It's pretending that this guy is somehow worse than the political operatives that we've had in place now for so many years. And then he brings in Alex Jones, and this is something, another technique they often use. They take Alex, one of Alex Jones's rants where he's crying and screaming and weeping and doing all these things, looking like a complete crazy person, and then he rolls out a bunch of Alex Jones's positions. And thanks again for this, Alex. So what he's done is link the whole truth community and the truth movement to one Alex Jones's psychological breakdowns. So he's established that Trump is a liar. He's established that Alex Jones is mentally ill. He's established that they are connected and that they are both connected to these truthful narratives. And then he lists Boston Marathon bombing, Sandy Hook, and weather modification, all of which have been more or less proven to be at least legitimate in the sense that, that the mainstream media narratives have been completely proven as false 
and the narratives coming out of the truth community are at least more accurate. And then he says that, then he lists this other one, which he makes the most ridiculous one, that there is a chemical that is turning, that turns frogs gay. And then he gets a big laugh from the audience. And this is the one he said is the most ridiculous. So again, this is a person that's supposed to be a science guy. And his show is based in him having a big uh, research team and them doing extensive research on topics that they cover. And if they did any bit of a research at all, because I found it and so many other truth community members found this, that this is actually something that is real, based in science, based in liberal science, not based in conspiracy theories, not based in some right-wing mentality, but there is an actual scientist that found this, and his name is Tyrone Hayes, and he is on this. I'll leave a link in the description box. This is from Democracy Now!, which is a left-leaning liberal alternative media source that I'm sure that John Oliver would think to be legitimate. And he was a researcher that was hired by this company, Syngenta, working through the University of California at Berkeley, a prestigious university on the West Coast. Because these chemical companies have to hire independent researchers. And he started to do research on their... Uh, chemical atrazine, which is used as a pesticide in parks all around the country. And what he found was this had a lot of negative effects on various animals, including frogs. It turned male frogs into female frogs and made them engage in homosexual behavior. It did the same thing in animals, and especially male animals. It did things to reduce their testosterone level, make them have micropenises, and non-existent reproductive organs. It was just brutal. And this chemical has also been banned in Europe and various other places based in science, a place where John Oliver originated from. And when he started to produce, produce these results, Syngenta put pressure on California Berkeley. The guy was fired, harassed, and threatened by thugs and all these types of things. This is a scientist. This is his story. And this is a liberal news media network where he's telling this. And these are facts. These are facts because other countries have banned this chemical because of its, its uh, horrible side effects. And it's unnecessary. It's just a pesticide. There's many of these types of things. So you can see how there's just psychological manipulation here without people doing proper research for themselves. So they trust somebody and somebody who's a reverent. This is the second tier of this psychological operation where comedians are just shills that come out there they gain people's trust and they link a bunch of things together and then they disparage truths that are harming all of us because these can easily be proven and this should be a national news story not only the fact that this chemical is being used because it goes along with all these other narratives that we've seen over and over again but also that this guy was harassed, and this is how they control science, because this is really important. There's scientific fraud here, where this guy used the scientific model, and it was effective. And then they warped his findings and dismissed his findings because they go went against a corporate's best interest, a corporate's financial interest. He was harassed and these types of things, and this is how science is not something that you can say, well, that scientists prove it. Yeah, well, as long as they're corporate backers, it's in the best interest of a corporation and its financial model because it's only truthful if it's financial, financially viable for the people who are paying for it. And this is something we've seen over and over again. So when you see liberal people and they go, science, 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 well, yeah, but it's science with money. It's science backed by money. And these scientists will either cave or they'll be taken out if they don't produce the results that they are paid to produce. And so science should never be considered facts. It's not facts. Science isn't factual. In fact, there's problems with the scientific model. Mistakes are made. A lot of it is theory. And then it's the corporate backers who produce the, the results. The results you see have to be backed by somebody with money. And so that's not factual. That's something where 
people are manipulating material research, scientific research for financial gain. All right, so this is Paul Romano reporting from the apocalypse. Everybody have a blessed day.